what's up guys in this video I'm going to review the brand new Autobahn Indoor Speedway location in Sterling Virginia this location just opened and went to check it out a few weeks ago so this video is from my first session on the track and also in this video I'm going to share some of my racing schedule for this year so stay tuned to the end of the video for that so here we are just getting into the cart buckling and tightening the seatbelt. There are seatbelts on these carts. It is a little awkward. I couldn't get it totally tight, so it felt a little bit pointless, but whatever. Um, you'll also see on the steering wheel, they have this LCD screen. Um, this is different from the carts that I drove at the other Autobahn Indoor Speedway location. I think this is the newer version of the carts, so that's kind of neat, I guess. And also interesting, you'll see I'm playing with the paddle shifters now. Um, they actually didn't enable the paddle shifters for us. They told us it's kind of a special thing and they'll only do it for certain people. And they won't ever, they won't ever do it on the weekends. And this was a Saturday. So we didn't get to try those out. I don't know exactly what they do. I don't think they actually change the gearing of the cart. It is an electric motor. So, you know, um, you don't really need to change the gearing. But I think it does something maybe on the, I guess on the software or the control side. So while we're waiting to get on track, I'll probably speed up this video a little bit. And in the meantime, I'll talk a little bit, bit about some of the pros I can think of. So in terms of the layout of the space and the design and the direct, the decoration of the whole facility, everything from the lobby to the viewing area, to the lighting of the place and the temperature, I just think they did a really good job. I've been to some other indoor karting places that I really like as a racer, but they were cold in the winter and hot in the summer, and they weren't that well lit, and they smelled like gas. So Audubon, you know, they don't have these problems. So from the perspective of creating a nice appealing environment to the mainstream consumer, they really nailed it. Alright, so here we are finally getting up to speed. Like most electric indoor car places, if you haven't been to them, they do remote control your speed and your power. And I'm actually not sure if we have maximum power here or if we're one level down from the maximum. They did tell us they gave us maximum, but you know, you never really know. A lot of times they don't give the general public the maximum power. And here it looks like there was a yellow flag and they auto slowed us down. And I think we get back up to speed pretty soon. So, to start out, I'll just kind of talk about and review the layout of the track. So, overall, I think it's pretty decent. You know, there's long straightaway here. There's kind of like a breaking zone. A sharp corner, you know. Um, and then here, there's kind of a nice corner. It's this a little bit bigger radius hairpin turn. There's a little bit of kind of like Mickey Mouse back and forth stuff that I'm not a big fan of. A little bit of breaking here. And then here, there's like a little complex where you have to sacrifice a little on the first one to get that corner onto the main straight, but I didn't do it very well there. Um, but overall, given the confines of the space, you know, I think they did a pretty good job with the track layer. Okay, so now I'm going to get into my biggest criticism of, of Autobahn, and unfortunately that's just in the racing and the driving experience in general. So here we're watching me work up to speed, and while there's some things involved, like finding the right line, of course, and here there's a little bit of lifting or braking, and there's some places where you can see I'm kind of balancing the cart on the limit with the steering. But overall, there's just not that much. I mean, really, it just feels kind of easy. Um, so in this video, you'll see up ahead, eventually I'm going to pass these carts, But this is just our first time out on the track and people are still figuring things out. And if this was a competitive league, like within a few sessions, 
everyone would have like basically figured it out good enough to the point where it's really hard to differentiate yourself. So overall, it just feels like there's not a big difference between mastering the cart in the track and just doing okay. Instead of there being a big challenge, it just feels like it's just about having a nice comfortable experience and the skill component is just an extra nice to have. So this corner coming up is a good example of what I mean. So right here, as we're turning in, instead of having to like lift or tap the brakes, pitch the card in and balance it and not lose your momentum, not let the cart bog, instead you just kind of turn the wheel to full lock, maybe lift off the brake a little bit, and then just kind of let the cart steer itself with the differential, because these carts do have a differential. And then that's it, really. So, on a related point, I don't think the carts handle very well. I think basically they're too heavy to handle the conventional way with a solid rear axle, so they have to put this differential in and tune it just to get the cart to turn, and that really changes the whole dynamics of the game. So, that's about it, really. I think that was a little bit of a harsh review. Overall, I will say, you know, I did have a fun, I thought it was a fun experience. From a racing standpoint, you know, I don't think I've, com I, I don't think I've mastered the track. I think there's still places where I can look to pick up speed. So, I do think I would look to come back sometime. I would like to try out the manual mode of the shifting gears, whatever that does. Um, my lap time was 26.3, which I think was on my last lap, which is coming up. The lap was 4th fastest for the week, and it was within a tenth of the fastest of the week, but supposedly it was about 3 tenths off the track record. Supposedly the track record is set with the manual shifting mode, which they tell me does make it faster. So, something to check out when I come back next time. So, overall, I would recommend Audubon as a really cool place to go with your non-racing friends. As a racer, I think it's still a good place to check out and maybe visit occasionally, but I would also recommend finding a more a rental car place that has a more pure racing experience. I think there are some out there, but you have to look for them. Finally, to end the video, the racing season is starting soon, and my first, the first race I'm planning on is April 2nd, and that's a club race at Sandy Hook Speedway. And April 23rd is a divisional race at Sandy Hook Speedway that I'm planning to attend. And the week after that, I'm planning to race at Summit Point on the Shenandoah circuit. That was a really fun race last year, which I posted a video of the photo finish from that race. So I'm definitely looking forward to those races to start the season. Later in the season, I'm planning to race probably a total of around 10 times. Most of the races are going to be at Sandy Hook, which is where you're going to see you know, most of my videos from, and most of the ones I've made in the past, with me racing the tag cart. I might try to do a few more races. VRR would be a big one that I might be able to make in June, and I'm also planning to head up to the track and help out and watch my friend race his RX-7, so I might have some videos of that as well. So that's my plans and that's it for this video. I hope you liked the review. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.